comments for unity in our own country. Uh, sadly, when something like that happens overseas, uh, you have very passionate people on various sides of things. And so this is really uh, calling us back to our foundation, both as Christians and as Americans. Okay, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we are witnessing families around the world experiencing the agonizing wait for word about the fate of loved ones killed or taken hostage by Hamas. We are in anguish, grieving and praying for all people who are living in trauma, fear and uncertainty. As Lutheran Christians of the United States of America, we recognize that among us are Palestinian Lutherans who are fearful for their families right now as well. Furthermore, in our diverse communities throughout America, we have both Jewish and Muslim neighbors who are facing the horrors of this crisis from afar and its impact on their loved ones in the Holy Land. As Christians, God has called us to be a people who stand with others amid suffering, who speak truth in love, and who work for peace in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In addition, as American citizens, we have inherited the great founding principles of our land, especially the principle of E Pluribus Unum, unity from plurality. For we are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen, and amen, and amen. All right. Now, uh, I do want to, to call your attention to what is so obvious before our eyes, this beauty all around us in this quilt. Thank you, quilters, for your work here. For those of you who don't know, our quilting group, Threads of Hope, makes these quilts, along with quilting groups from all over our country, and these are gathered together in different gathering sites, so we'll box these up after church today. We do need help with that if anyone would like to stay and help box these up. But these quilts go out to the world through uh, Lutheran World Relief, the Ministry of Lutheran World Relief. And these quilts go where, wherever there's need. And uh, they provide warmth and comfort to those who are facing crisis. Uh, and uh, in fact, a couple of years ago, remember there was that explosion in Lebanon, and uh, there was so much uh, destruction, but there was a whole bunch of Lutheran World Relief quilts there that were spared, miraculously, did not get destroyed, and they went to all the refugee camps in Syria and, and Jordan and so forth. So these quilts go out, and as you've heard me say again and again, and I'll say again and again, they're not only used as blankets, they're used to sew pants and jackets and whatever's needed. So thank you again, quilters, and this is just a wonderful symbol and expression of love for a world in need, okay? So thanks again. Uh, and then now, uh, today, you might have noticed if you've been really looking at your bulletin, but we are starting a new liturgy. Uh, now, as you know, uh, in the past, our church has had two or three liturgies that we would cycle through. And uh, but when the pandemic hit, we went to one liturgy, just to kind of keep it simple. And we've been doing that same liturgy since even the pandemic has ended. So now it's time, probably past time, to start rotating through uh, two or three liturgies for our church throughout any given year. This is a liturgy that's right from your red hymnals that's in front of you, what's called the ELW, or Evangelical Lutheran Worship Book. Uh, it's an official liturgy of our church, and it's one of the more common liturgies that you'll find in our church no matter where you go. If you go to a, uh, an ELCA church up in Minnesota, uh, you'll probably run into this service or, or one of the others, of course, from the ELW. But this is a very common one. Uh, so I say we're learning a new liturgy, but in a way we're relearning it. You probably don't remember, but we learned this liturgy back in 2019. And we did it for some months. And then, of course, uh, we, we changed because of the pandemic, and we never went back. So we are relearning this. So you might find this somewhat familiar. So, brothers and sisters, today is a learning Sunday. It's a teaching Sunday. 
Uh, we're learning this liturgy. We'll be, we're just going to make a joyful noise. Do your best. Sing out as best you can. Required to practice it this last uh, Wednesday evening. And, and they're going to try and help lead us from wherever they're at in the, in the crowd. Uh, and uh, But it's a beautiful liturgy. I, I'm sure you'll come to love it as much as our one we've been doing for so long now. And by the way, we're not getting rid of the one we've been doing. We're going to keep that. So once we learn this, we're going to get into a rotation. And then maybe uh, in a year or so, we'll have a third. And then we'll have those as our basic liturgy structures. And of course, music, uh, hymns change each Sunday. Okay. Well, let's begin our worship with our gathering hymn, Shout to the Lord. It's number 821 in your hymn books if you need the music to sing along. Otherwise, it's printed in your bulletin. As you're able, you may rise for this hymn.
Christ, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for His sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share God's peace. Good morning. How are you today? Well, today I want to talk to you about a very special word. It's the word peace. Peace. Have you ever heard that word before? Peace. We just went around sharing the peace. We kept saying, peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. So that word peace is really interesting. And uh, what it means is uh, being free of, uh, of danger, uh, having security and safety. It also means uh, being free of fear uh, and things like that. Okay? So you can have an outer peace where you're free of, of danger, and you can have an inner peace. You can have an inner peace where you're, you're free of fear and anxiety and all those sorts of things, okay? And in fact, um, uh, like police officers, uh, you know police officers? They're sometimes called peace officers. Did you know that? They're sometimes, sometimes called peace officers because they help keep the peace and keep us safe and secure. So that's why they're called peace officers, okay? So that's what peace means. And, of course, there's all different ways of saying peace in different languages. So in English, we say peace. Uh, do you know how to say peace in Spanish? I know others do. Go ahead and say it if you know it. Paz. That's right. Paz. P-A-Z. Uh, and we, we can also say it in Latin, too. I'm, yeah, we heard pax back there. P-A-X. Or pax. Sometimes people say pax. And that means peace in Latin. Uh, how do you say peace in Japanese? Heiwa. Heiwa. So, yeah, so heiwa. Okay, so that's how you say peace in Japanese. And uh, I even looked it up in Armenian. And, uh, of course, uh, instead of a single syllable like these other languages, Armenian, it was kagagutnyan. Kagagutnyan is how you say peace in Armenian. And of course, in Hebrew, how do you say peace? Shalom. Shalom. And of course, in Arabic, it's Salam. Okay. So there's all different ways of saying peace, and peace is very important. But you know, the only way you can get true peace, because we all want peace, you guys, is through the Lord. Okay. And we see that in our second Bible lesson today. It says, all your concerns... Everything you're scared about, everything you're dealing with, pray to the Lord about it. Give it to the Lord. And if we give all these prayers to the Lord, then it says the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, will guard us, will protect us, okay? We'll have peace in our hearts that transcends all human understanding, okay? Put your hands together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending us our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, that he is the Prince of Peace and the King of the Universe, Lord. God, help us to lift up to you all of our concerns, whatever they may be, so that we may have your peace in our hearts and minds, that our hearts and minds will be guarded by your peace, and it will transcend all understanding. And God, we also pray for your shalom, your peace, in our families, in our communities, in our nation, and for our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you go back. The congregation may now rise as you're able.
again, today is a teaching day. We're learning, relearning this other day.
if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Here comes the second lesson. Thanks be to God. As you're able, you may rise for our gospel acclamation and the reading of the Holy Gospel.
primary foundation for their sense of security comes from the ability to make money, to purchase stuff, and own things. But when the ability to purchase stuff and own things is somehow diminished, then the basic sense of security also diminishes with it. However, according to our Lord Jesus Christ, there is a true and lasting security that remains constant despite the ups and downs of personal fortune. And this transcendent security <coughs> and blessed assurance flows from a living relationship with God. A living relationship with God, a daily relationship. In fact, the Bible talks about our relationship with God as a personal invitation by a king to his beloved subjects to participate in a great celebration. Both the prophet Isaiah in our Bible lesson today, our first Bible lesson, and our Lord Jesus Christ in our gospel reading today, his parable of the wedding banquet, both Isaiah and Jesus speak of the kingdom of God as like a glorious feast with the universal king of heaven and earth. Both Isaiah and our Lord Jesus proclaim that God Almighty is throwing a huge party, brothers and sisters, a lavish banquet <clears throat> celebration that begins here and now in this mortal existence we are passing through and grows into its eternal fulfillment in the fullness of time. Isaiah even offers to us the menu here. He declares a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, it says, of well-aged wines strained clear for us. And Jesus adds that the fullness of God's reign will not just be any kind of banquet. Jesus says it will be like a wedding. <coughs> a wedding banquet given by a king for his dear son's wedding day. And immediately we think of the heavenly wedding banquet of Christ Jesus himself as the groom. And mystically speaking, all the people of God in Christ as his bride, the church. And this feast is provided for all peoples, as it says in Isaiah. That's all peoples of all nations, including ultimately Ukraine and Russia together, Armenia and Azerbaijan together, Israel and Palestine together, Saudi Arabia and Iran together, Taiwan and China together. A glorious, heavenly banquet where all sit at the table in peace. But the problem, according to this parable story of Jesus, is that not all who are invited are even interested in showing up to the party. In fact, those in Jesus' story who had the early invitations seem the least interested. They are not even interested in sending a regretful RSVP. So servants are dispatched to the invited guests once, then twice, but they just don't care to come to this great and special supper of their Lord and King. Everything is ready. Their Lord's table is set for all to come and enjoy, for all to come and receive their King's gracious goodness. But this invitation is met first with apathy, then with mockery, then with complete disregard, 
some going to their farm, others going to their business. Then the response turns toward mistreatment. Mistreatment of the king's servants and even violence. And that seems to be the way it goes with rejection of God and God's invitation. That seems to be a pattern when we reject God. First apathy, then mockery, disregard, and then even mistreatment and violence at the extreme end. Brothers and sisters, living in denial of the great king in our daily lives, and living in denial of the son of the king, as if there is no great wedding banquet to be enjoyed together, the rejection of this gracious invitation tends to follow the pattern I just outlined. There's simply no interest in gathering for the special meal of God, the feast of the king. And you know, we too can all do the same thing whenever we take God's invitation for granted and neglect to gather together on a regular basis to receive the word and sacrament of Christ Jesus each week. And we fall into the delusion of seeking our ultimate security in anything and everything other than where true and lasting security are found for us. Until, of course, we come to the end of our rope and we find ourselves unable to sustain any sense of inner peace by our own effort apart from the Lord. So, in the face of all the disregard for the king's invitation, in this parable story told by our Lord Jesus, the question arises as to the response of the king. For right after his living and breathing invitations, his servants are mistreated. The king responds with swift retribution. The murderers are killed and their city destroyed. And the king says, Go, go therefore, out into the streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet of my dear son. And then the servants do as they're told. And they invite, welcome, and include all who wish to come and be a part of the king's celebration. God just throws out the entire seating chart here. His planned seating chart is completely thrown in the garbage. And he throws wide open the banquet hall doors for any and all who would come. The scene in Jesus' parable story here is amazing. It's noisy and raucous. And all the rich food and choice wine is being gulped down plate after plate and glass after glass by any and all who respond affirmatively and wholeheartedly to the open invitation of the king. It's a festive scene here with all sorts of people, all sorts of people you wouldn't expect in the king's banquet hall. And there is not an empty seat to be found. And you imagine that the king is smiling here with a deep and joy-filled satisfaction when he first enters. And all the guests are wearing the wedding robe freely given to them. Except one. Except the guest who refused to wear a wedding robe. And he was consequently thrown out as a result of his rejection of the king's gift for his court at Naples. In other words, this person attended the king's meal the king's holy meal, but revealed that he did not truly affirm the king's invitation in good faith for himself and did not respect the gracious king's free offer and sovereign will for his banquet. So, here we are today, brothers and sisters, on this day of the Lord called Sunday, sharing in God's good gifts of word and sacrament. Our weekly foretaste of the coming feast of rich food and choice wines 
for all creation. In Jesus Christ our Lord, we are truly rich in faith and truly secure in Christian hope, even in the face of personal hardships, local disasters, national uncertainties, and even global tragedies. <coughs> For as one of my favorite authors, spiritual authors, Thomas Merton wrote, and I quote, Whether you understand it or not, God loves you. God is present in you. God lives in you, dwells in you, calls you, saves you, and offers you and understanding and compassion, which are like nothing, which are like nothing you have ever found in a book or heard in a sermon. I'm a donkey. Wow. So through thick and thin, let us not be like that would-be guest in Jesus' parable today who did not appreciate his inclusion in the banquet and did not affirm the king's goodness and graciousness by wearing the wedding banquet robe that the king had freely given out to all. Let us, brothers and sisters, proudly, openly, and boldly wear the spiritual robes of God's baptismal covenant upon our hearts and souls, always appreciating and affirming God's invitation and inclusion in the great banquet, not failing to gather together, as is the habit of some, but to gather regularly to receive God's goodness. For as we hear in Isaiah today, Lo, this is the Lord for whom we've waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in His salvation. In Jesus' name, Amen. We now have special music.
Brothers and sisters, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into Thank you. 
God. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. We'll now receive our regular weekly offering. <coughs>
And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after that supper, Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread of life and drink this cup of salvation, we proclaim the Lord's sacrificial death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray daily the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Everyone here is welcome to the Lord's table to receive this gracious gift of God for you and your loved ones. It's by invitation of Christ himself. So please come forward at this time.
if you're able, you may rise for our post communion canto. <laughs> Amen. Our sending him is come now, Almighty King. 